today we will be joined by League of Legends caster and professional coach Yamato Cannon, aka Jacob Mebdi. Yamato Cannon is an avid chess fan and he already knows a lot about chess. I was very pleasantly surprised by his chess skills, so I'm curious to know about Jacob's chess journey and how did he learn to play chess? Where did he pick up all the knowledge? Because he clearly does know a thing or two when it comes to chess openings, middle game strategies, en passant, and so on, tactical motives. Hello again! Hello! <laughs> Hello again indeed. Nice to meet you now <laughs> through a camera as well. Nice to meet you too, officially through camera, even though I saw you the entire time. Yeah. So I was oh. getting an well, advantage. I'll, I'll need to ask you about that because I've been looking at your games. And you know okay. a lot about chess already. Where does this Do chess knowledge come <laughs> from? Yes. I just, I don't know. It's it's weird. Like I've been watching a lot of the tournaments. I, I guess the, the one that I watched the most recently, because now there's like the world championship going on in League of Legends. So I'm super busy. Yes. I watched the one where um, Magnus and uh, uh, Hikaru went all the way to, uh, what's it, Armageddon in the last match where yeah. Magnus won? Yeah, in the, the Magnus Black 2 PC. finals. I just, I just follow the coverage and I pretend to know it all. It's like, well, why is this guy doing this move? <laughs> oh my goodness. See, and Levi and Anna are agreeing with me. You know, <laughs> I'm just pretending to know. I pick up some pieces here and there, but always when I play myself, I find myself in awful positions. So uh, it's not <laughs> transferring that well. <laughs> I, I do think it's transferring definitely to some extent because um, when I looked at your games, I was searching for any typical errors, some theme that would would occur more often in your games. But there okay. isn't a pattern. There isn't like, oh, you clearly don't know this or you clearly don't know that. <laughs> there, there, are, there are very few mistakes in your games and they also don't tend to to follow a pattern that like, oh, you clearly like this or that knowledge. So okay. that's great. All right. <laughs> that's scary at the same time because I'm stuck in bad ratings. <laughs> no, we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that. But I was curious, when did you learn to play chess and, and how did you improve? Because I did see you have um, on your YouTube some videos where you are learning chess. I, I wonder when did it start? So I guess it's uh, it's been on and off. Like I randomly stumbled, stumbled upon like I got Mato videos. They just got randomly like suggested to me. I just watched them. Mm -hmm. And then I got interested in chess again. And then I had this idea of, you know, just activating my mind in different avenues than just uh, my line of work. So I thought if I play chess, that uh, it might spark some a new creativity in me uh, and might transfer over into other avenues. But mm -hmm. uh, I played a lot when I was a child. Hmm. Like back in fourth grade, I played like tournaments. I think it was just a part of like the school system in Sweden. And uh, in fourth grade, a uh, bunch of tournaments but the problem with those tournaments were like we went as a school group so basically like it was a team tournament i won all my games but you know my team dragged me down and that was the <laughs> <end>. wow <laughs> yes yes <laughs> so so you used to compete uh, in scholastic tournaments yes yes but it was very low level like just uh, i guess we have um I don't know what they're called in English, but like the, the country is divided into like 24 parts, I believe. Uh -huh. And uh, like in that little part that was my city, uh, I did well. I did OK. So you are basically um, the champion of your region. As a fourth grader, maybe. <laughs> but among like, fourth graders. <laughs> among fourth graders. I could beat down. Maybe I could beat, beat children. You know, that's that's, <laughs> that's my level. <laughs> well, that's a great start. That's a great start. And after school, so after primary school, you didn't uh, continue with your chess uh, competitions, but from time to time you would still play in your spare time. Every now and then, like we had this tradition, me and my, my buddies uh, that I grew up with, like usually when, like in summer, we take a chess board with us and we play a chess game and hmm. I beat all my friends and that's, uh, that's my <laughs> proudest achievement in chess. <laughs> I hope you didn't lose your friends because of that. Uh, if you no, always no, beat no them, at all. <laughs> no worries at all. No worries at all. But that's great. It it does show in your games that you do have um, uh, the you do know the fundamentals. You do know chess theory. You know, do know middle game strategies. 
I was impressed that you know the Ampassan rule as well and all that <laughs> stuff that normal people don't know. So it definitely. I forget it a lot, so it's like <laughs> it's it's on and off. <laughs> But yeah, it definitely shows that that you you have the right foundations. So I'm I'm okay. gonna try to build on those foundations and and help okay. you improve even further. If that sounds like Please. a plan. <laughs> yes, yes. Lead the way. Lead the way. I don't know what to expect, but uh, I'm I'm ready for anything. So one thing I heard from your your stream is that you don't like much to play with the black pieces. So I'm gonna force you play today with the black pieces, obviously. Um, in okay. the analysis board, what we're gonna do first. Um, I'm going to make moves as if it was a game, so I'll need you to respond. You can flip the board to see it from Black's perspective, and you will just oh, need to keep... Flipping. Oh, I press reset board. Uh, that oh. looked like a flip button. <laughs> no <Sorry>. worries, no <laughs> worries. Um, there, if you go to the top right corner of uh, the board, where the, yes, um, yes. the Black Rook is... There's oh, a... flip board. Boom. Yes. So we're going to pretend that this is a game of yours. And okay. you're going to have to re be responding to my moves. But at the same time, I'd like you to be explaining your thought process. And every time you have any doubts, questions, just speak out loud your thoughts. And I'm going to try my best to help. So my first move is just because I remember it as the correct move of what I like to play. I like to play the French defense when I'm black as a response to, to E4. Great so opening just... choice. My favorite opening. So I approve. <laughs> I approve. Here I'm, I'm talking about the French defense, but I don't know if my continuation would be correct here. I'll just go with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try this line. Okay, excellent. So you do know quite some theory when it comes to openings. I have no idea, you tell me <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> yes, you do, you do. All right, all right, glad to hear it. Excellent. I'm going to try to make moves that I think could be challenging um, when it comes okay. to competing at your level. Hmm. That sentence alone made me think. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about. For now. I'm just going to accept that I'm going might lose a tempo here if you capture my pawn. Uh huh. So you were saying that because if now I take this pawn, I feel the need to castle because I'm afraid of the rook move to pin my bishop. Excellent. And you're not worried about this pawn um, being an extra pawn for me. You, you think I'll take you'll... it. Take it later, hopefully. Okay. So I'm gonna try to protect it because you say you can take it back later. Okay. Hmm. Well, there's no time control, so I'm going to take forever here. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell me about your candidate's move. I, I, I would love to know more about your thought process. So anything that, uh, that comes to your mind is helpful for me to help you in the future. Well, the only move, like I, I'm thinking if I should just continue development and just leave it for later, because mm -hmm. it's a weakness anyway, and I am in no rush. Yeah. And the other move that I'm thinking of is just to move my knight to uh, e4, but it feels kind of off. Mm -hmm. But you can't challenge me with any pawn, so it doesn't feel too bad. Mm -hmm. So those are the two two things that uh, come to my mind. Excellent. Yeah, that's so far that's really good. A really good thinking, knight to e4. And if not knight e4, what other move would you consider? I'm just thinking bishop to, to g4. Mm -hmm. That's a very good move too. So which one okay. would be your choice in a game? I think I would just go for bishop uh, g4. Mm -hmm. Very good job. That's a developing move. And this pin is annoying um, because I don't have too many ways of countering it. So if I were to if I were to step out of it, let's say I move my queen to d3 because I don't want you to destroy my pawn structure when you take on f3. I need to be protecting my knight with the queen. Let's see what what candidates moves would you have in this position what would be your thinking 
the, the first thing that came to my mind is just moving up uh, the knight to challenge the the queen mm -hmm. um, but you have another square to play with and it will force me to move back with the knight so it feels kind of bad so if knight before you're saying i would have to move the queen to which square exactly i, I would imagine you would move it to uh, to d4 Okay, let's visualize this. Pos let's so visualize that line to to see fully. Knight to b4, queen d4. I'd like you to imagine that position. And what would you play there as black? I guess I would just capture uh, the knight then to to ruin the pawn structure on the king side. Yes, you can do that. So I'm just gonna draw arrows for my viewers to to understand what line we are talking about. Um, can you see anything else besides that? So that's already great, right? If you can destroy the pawn structure in front of my king, that's that's an accomplishment. Hmm. That's great. As, is there anything else you can spot after knight b4, queen d4? Well, I guess uh, there's a. Oh, there's also this uh, beautiful. Uh, I guess I'll challenge both. Well, if I capture the pawn. Exactly. You can take on c2, and that's a fork. My queen and rook are hanging. Okay, so you'll never move your queen there. <laughs> Good to well, know. <laughs> well, you have seen it. You have seen it blindfold, and at your level, those are the kind of moves that happen. So, yeah, I will not play that, but it will happen in your games. That okay. that's very much that's very much a pock champs move, for instance, queen to d4 right. because it's active. <laughs> it's an active move. No, honestly, that would be the best move if c2 wasn't hanging. Plus the bishop takes f3 move that you also spotted. So both of those are very annoying for white and I will lose material. Very good job. So where shall I okay. place my queen then after knight b4 if this is an issue? Hmm. I guess you'll have to move it to this square. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, yeah, I can see it. Very good. Yes, I can move to c3. To what would be a the... follow-up? Mm -hmm. I keep defending c2. Would, would you still have a good follow-up there for black? I'm guessing... Like the first instinct is that I can push the pawn to defend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then the continuation, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good instinct to not have to retreat the knight, but you can keep it on b4 protected by the a pawn. That's good. Um, in terms of my queen, what is it that my queen has to be doing in that position of the knight before queen c3? Um, can you tell me what are the roles of the white queen in that position? Just to defend uh, the, the, the c2 pawn, to uh -huh. make sure that I can't hop with the knight. Yeah. Anything and, uh, else my queen I, is doing? I guess if anything, it also helps in the defense of my pawn here in the center if I decide to push it. Mm -hmm. That's something that comes to mind. But other than that, I guess also the defense of the the knight. Exactly. So my queen is very busy. It has to be protecting the C2 pawn. <laughs> it has to be protecting F3 as well. Can I actually carry out so many tasks at the same time? Do you think the no. queen is all right there? Well, the queen is a great piece. So maybe, <laughs> maybe she'll manage, you know. I'm not too sure. Let's... Let's visualize that position again, because that's one of my favorite exercises to do during coaching sessions that I don't let you play out those moves, but I want you to visualize okay. knight b4, queen to c3. And if you can take advantage of the fact that my queen has to be protecting both c2 and f3. Or try to take advantage of it. I guess I, I would try to expand in a way where I defend uh, the the d4 square enough for me to push my pawn mm -hmm. so i guess i can just uh, look to just develop for that that's like my thought process right away i also have a bishop to play with so i guess if i move my knight to somewhere i can also potentially just put my bishop on that diagonal mm -hmm. and just ignore this pawn that is uh, in front of my uh, knight currently yeah that's where my my thoughts lead me uh, right off the bat mm -hmm. with time maybe i can think of something else but then i can also just go back to the original move of hopping with my knight uh forward again uh, to that original plan that i had instead of uh, developing the bishop and just going over there 
Yes, yeah. So all those thoughts are great. Um, and when it comes to that exact position of the knight b4, queen c3, um, your initial idea was to push a5, right? Uh, a5, yes, to, to defend the knight first, yes. Yes. So after having seen all these ideas, um, what would be your conclusion? What is it that you think you would do after knight b4, queen c3? And then we will play out those moves, but I just would like you to, to tell me overall if you have any conclusions. So I'll just, I'll defend with the pawn. I'll defend the pawn. I mean, defend the knight with mm -hmm. the pawn. And then I will just, uh, the quickest way to push the queen away is just to uh, challenge uh, her with my second knight. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that would be my plan. Yes. So knight b4, and we have talked about how queen d4 is is a bad move. You have discovered this blindfold. You you already told me that you could take on f3 to this, to damage the pawn structure or take on c2 or both. Actually, you could, you could take both, but pr possibly starting with knight takes c2, attacking the queen and the rook. That's the most precise because you are winning mm -hmm. material. So that's great job that you have spotted this. And after queen c3, we have talked about how the queen is overloaded. It has to be protecting c2 and f3 at the same time. But it's true that I'm attacking your knight. So you, you are dealing with it with the pawn push to a5. Sometimes in positions like this, when a pawn is the piece that's protecting the knight here, um, there would be tactical motives with the move knight takes a5. Is that the case here? Can white take that pawn on a5 and then capture on b4? I think my queen will just solo win the game. <laughs> exactly. Very good job. I don't have any tricks here because if I were to take the pawn, you take back with the queen and that protects the knight on b4. Very good job. Now, as you said, after protecting the knight, uh, there are lots of threats that you can play for. You can play knight e4, next move. That will that will cause me lots of headaches because my queen is running out of of potential squares and and keep. <laughs> I I don't know how I will keep holding onto the c2 pawn and the f3 knight. And also another thing about uh, my queen being so overloaded is that, for instance, if I play, well, um, I was gonna say h3 just as an example. How would you react to, to a pawn push like this? I'm trying to attack your pieces. I think I'll just keep the tension. You can keep the tension, exactly. Um, and the other idea would be, if you once again think of how overloaded my queen is. Oh, I guess I can just continue with my plan. There's no reason for me to, to move the bishop out of the way. Yeah. And I can maybe win a tempo. Yes, like knight e4, because even though your bishop is hanging, obviously you're attacking a more valuable piece, so mm. I need to deal with your threat. Um, I don't have many options for my queen. This is this would be a super unpleasant position where I'm likely to lose <laughs> material, because if I were to move my queen to e3 or d4, you still have the same fork on c2. And if I move yep, yep. to e5, uh, well, I'm sure you will find, I'm sure you will find another great move here for black. Let's see. I'll just, I guess I'll just continue with the bishop to push your queen away. Uh-huh. Because where can my idea. queen go now? Is it trapped? Um, oh, it looks pretty it's, trapped. It's almost trapped. Yeah, I don't have much space, unfortunately. I see a little square over there and it can go <laughs> yeah. into this diagonal. I have to go to f4 or h2. Very good. Um, now before we make that move the bishop move so in this position for instance if you have a position like this in your game mm -hmm. i think you would have the intuition that this should be good for black because you have just made a couple of moves that that ha have been attacking my queen i have to keep constantly running away there are so many things that are hanging the c2 pawn the f3 knight so i'm pretty sure that you would you would know by intuition that you are doing well here um, yes, yes. What's important in better positions or winning positions, I, I don't know how winning this is, but definitely it's better for black, um, is that you consider your options and compare which one is better. So so to say, bishop f6 is one candidate move, and it's a very tempting move, but let's mm -hmm. compare it to a few other options and see which one is the strongest. Okay. Hmm. Try to think of something. Oh, I, I could just capture uh, the knight in this position. Mm -hmm. 
uh, with the bishop. That's one thought. And um, the other way, hmm. I just need to think about my bishop. So my thought process is either I challenge uh, the, uh, the, the rook that is chilling over there mm -hmm. uh, and uh, capture the pawn with my bishop, or I have to challenge the, the, the queen uh, with my bishop as uh, like the first move or yes. just capture uh, the knight. Yeah, so you have basically three candidate moves. The bishop uh, move we looked at first, bishop f6, bishop mm -hmm. takes f3, and knight takes c2. Now, I'm not going to let you move uh, your pieces, but I would like you to, to think about each a little bit. What would happen afterwards? What would happen after bishop takes f3? What would happen after knight takes c2 and bishop f6? So let's calculate a little bit all three. So my thought process is, uh, after um, I capture the knight, I would uh, then I would assume it would it would be recaptured. Otherwise, probably the game is just turbo lost. Yes, exactly. You might have to take back. And then my idea would be to instantly uh, expand, move my bishop to to h4, and then to try to get my queen uh, into the game. And then I might push out your queen with my rook, and mm -hmm. then just to try to make a rook lift at the same time. Yeah. The idea is good, um, but let's just also double check after bishop takes f3, g takes f3, that um, every move also take a look at what is white threatening, what is your opponent doing, because the idea would be good overall, but let's take mm -hmm. a look at white's pieces and what, what is it that white wants after that capture. I guess um, in all of these lines that I drew, I didn't really think about any of these bishops that are <laughs> doing a lot of work here. Yeah, those bishops are annoying, so rook e8 wouldn't be possible, nor the queen yes, coming yes. to g5. And once you take on f3, uh, in that line, what happens after pawn takes f3? Uh, uh, sorry, can you repeat? Yes, exactly. So when you take on f3, in that line, bishop takes f3, g takes f3, um, what changes in the position? I'm starting to get confused with all the letters and the, oh, and the yeah. numbers. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me draw. Let, let me draw. No, <laughs> yes, please, you, you, please. Don't, you don't need to. You, sorry. Um, it's a very bad chess player habit. We just we just spit <laughs> out letters and numbers and I, we don't realize how it's not intuitive. Uh, can you see the arrows I've drawn? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Now let's let's do it this way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to to <laughs> hold the. That's good for me to learn. Like, I want to learn. No, no, no. <laughs> but honestly, it's it's not important. We just get okay. used to it because when you play over the board tournaments, we need to write the the moves oh. on a score sheet. So you kind of need to learn the board, learn to read very quickly because you need to mm. write down the moves quickly, especially in time trouble. Yes, uh, yes. But it doesn't it doesn't. Uh, make any, uh, I mean, I don't think it gives you anything other than it's easier to read chess books. But when you Sounds stream, cool. <laughs> <laughs> when you stream or when you compete online, it it doesn't matter what's the name of the square. So don't worry about it. Um, okay. The arrows, the bishop takes the knight, the pawn takes yes, back. Yes. What is it that changes in the position? Tell me everything that you see as difference. Uh, I guess my knight is being challenged which I completely uh, neglected exactly. by the pawn. Yes. Uh, that was that was silly of me. I completely forgot about that knight. And then I guess, hmm, I would have to move it, but there aren't any exciting squares besides capturing the pawn, I guess. Okay, I could just capture the pawn. That's not too shabby. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. would leave the e4. Uh, so you would leave the the knight in the center hanging, and you would capture the pawn here to. No, no, I would capture this pawn. This pawn, the c pawn. Oh, that pawn. Okay, you would you you would jump away. You wouldn't allow me to to take the knight. Yes, on, yes. On e4. I like that knight. Okay, okay, that's reassuring, because <laughs> <laughs> for a moment, for a moment, I thought you were talking about this. Which is interesting, but I was curious, how do you evaluate positions like this, where I would be allowed to take this knight, and yes, you win the rook, but white can take that knight it, uh... too. Uh, do you know the value of the pieces, how they compare? Yes, yes. Awesome. So what would that be? What would that trade be overall? Is this a good deal or not? This would be a very bad deal. Very bad deal. Why is it a bad deal? 
Well, like the the score is the same, but I sacrificed two pieces. And I guess the trade-off is that you ruin your pawn structure, but that was a price that you already paid from before, so it had nothing to do with the trade. Mm -hmm. 3-3 three, three versus 5-1, but two pieces is just more valuable uh, than a pawn in this case, I think. Excellent. You perfectly know exactly the, the 5 plus pawn, 3 plus 3 and 3. <laughs> Guys, for those of you who don't understand what Jacob is talking about, a minor <laughs> piece is worth 3 points or 3 pawns, a rook is 5, a pawn is 1, and Jacob just did the maths that it's the same value. <laughs> But you give up two minor pieces, so you better not. And yes, the pawn structure was already ruined. So this this isn't a good deal. Good job. That, Thank that's you. great. <laughs> it, these are the things that usually beginners find difficult to even compare because you might think that the rook is well, it's, it's the second um, second most powerful piece. So usually beginners tend to uh, give up the minor pieces for the rook. So I'm, I'm happy to see that you do value the minor pieces better here, and especially since your knights are already very active and well-developed. So knight mm. takes c5 is the move that you were talking about, and that's perfect. You have won the pawn back that you gave me in the opening, and you have ruined my king <laughs> I structure. told you, no I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you told me you were going to get it back, and look what happened to my king in the meantime. That's terrible. It's a disaster. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, indeed. Very good job. Thank you. Now this feels nice. <laughs> Let's go. Usually chess it. is such a cruel game, you know, like you play, you lose and sitting there all alone. And <laughs> no, I, I, I watched, I watched the, your games, as, as I said, um, some of it, I managed to catch in the VOD. I, I went back to mm -hmm. see the games that you played on your chess.com account and I was curious if you were streaming them and then I realized, yeah, these are the exact same games. So I went back to some of the critical moments in the VOD because um, there was a game where you where you lost a piece early in the opening, but then you fought back because you got these strong central pawns. I don't know if you remember that game. Um, it was six days no ago idea. the stream, so don't <laughs> worry if you don't. Um, but what I what I really liked in in your thought process is that even in the games where you made a mistake, so in that game you lost a piece out of the opening, but you found a way to get yourself back into the game. So it's your attitude was that. Yeah, I made a mistake, but the game is not <laughs> over. It's the, the complete warrior attitude that like, I'm gonna fight till the end. And you almost you almost turned the tables in that game too. And that was just impressive to see how much of a fighter you are. And that, <laughs> that yes, you, we all make mistakes, but it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. So you, you just immediately were like, okay, what, what can I have for it? So that's great. That's a great mentality. It's, it's the experience you know, knowing that uh... Being a piece ahead means absolutely nothing in 1200. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I think now that I'm thinking, you actually won that game because your opponent then blundered. You were attacking a lot and they blundered the queen, so you turned the tables like in terms of the result too. Um, but the mentality itself, yeah, so important, so important. Excellent. Poke champs, the mentality, huh? Yes. <laughs> so you win poke champs? But now That's I don't know dream. if they will let you play poke champs. Now I'm thinking maybe you're you're, you're going to be too strong. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to stop <laughs> no, saying so many good things about... <laughs> I know. I, I have know. to blunder some things. <laughs> I have to do some we bad moves. We need to pretend you're weaker. We need to pretend you're weaker. No, um, I don't know. I don't know yet. Uh, uh, any details of Pock Chimps. I do think there will be Pock Chimps 3 because it has been so successful, the first two. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I wonder I wonder if there will be any rating cap or, or if there will be a certain uh, strength of players that they aim for or not. Because uh, I was thinking that the, the field of Pock Chimps 2, even if you didn't train, the current level you have, you would have already fought for the top places with, oh, really? with your current knowledge. Yes. Okay. So you're standing very well when it comes to to <laughs> other gamers and and how much they know of chess. I don't know with Pock Champs one and the other league players there, Bog, Bo Box Box and Boy Boy. Because Boy Boy is like sixteen hundred or something, right? I remember watching. Him. I think he so. was going hard for the practice. Like he was <laughs> go going all out and he won the first one. I think, if I remember correctly. But yeah. I guess that uh, finishes our lesson. Thank you, Anna. I can't become. <laughs> Not allowed. <laughs> I cannot make it stronger. <laughs> no, I I think it all depends on on what will be the field like and if they aim for uh, beginners or already experienced or a mix. It probably possibly it would be a mix. Um, but I don't have information on that. I'm just rooting for you to get into it because <laughs> I think you you definitely deserve to be in Pock Champs. Cheers. That's that's nice. And if they don't invite me, I'll just take it as uh, another victory because they're they're just scared of me. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. That's, uh... <laughs>
<laughs> or we That's need to have a separate league for the champions uh, and and also add the strongest uh, um, players like like yourself because I do think that you could you could definitely play against Voi Boy and Hafu and 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 who knows what would happen if you if you challenge oh, the the current like champion. Like a champs candidates tournament. Yes. <laughs> I could just take all the winners. Exactly. That sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah, a separate league and ah, oh, that could be an entire system. I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest it to them. I'm gonna suggest. Now, in terms of the position, because I'm not going to stop torturing you here with the calculation. <laughs> uh, bishop takes f3. You already have calculated. You said earlier bishop f6. And how do you see knight takes c2? Or would you already discard that? So if this is your game and you had those yeah, three yeah. candidate moves, what would you do? I, I'm, I will continue with the bishop uh, capture knight. Mm -hmm. It just feels the best. I recapture the... It just, it just aesthetically looks so winning that uh, I think... I can close out the game, even though some other lines might be better, but they just seem more complicated. Yeah, very good thinking, very practical too. You don't have to analyze lines in much depth or or calculate everything because that that consumes time, and time is part of the games. Mm. Um, so this is a very good, very good decision, and you would be doing very well here. But I'm gonna keep making moves because another thing that I think one should practice a lot is converting winning advantages so mm -hmm. a position it's it's one thing when it's a winning advantage and the other is to actually get the full point so it's it's it still work and i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to make you work for it hard all right excellent um i'm gonna i'm gonna play this move and see how you react because you wanted to take that pawn i'm not gonna give it i'm not gonna give it to you Oh, no, 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 I didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's think about candidate moves, yes. <laughs> that one is out of the picture. <laughs> yes, yes. Hmm, I guess... Hmm, I don't mind doing this. It comes with the tempo. If you want to trade, you trade, then I don't mind. Mm -hmm. Why do you not mind a trade? Tell us about it. I'm ahead, so trading is good for me. What are you ahead? I have, uh, well, let me see what I'm ahead in. I have to think. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, the, the pawn structure is so messed up on, on the king side that I think I can uh, convert it into uh, a victory as long as I keep uh, uh, the queens on the board, I guess. Yes, so the material is equal, but you do have a positional advantage, a strategic advantage because of what you have mentioned. My pawn structure in front of the king is destroyed, is damaged. Excellent. Yes. And if we were to trade on c6, how does that affect your pawn structure? Not that much, considering it doesn't change how many pawn islands I have. But at the same time, I would have one pawn. Actually, no, it's fine. It's fine. Nothing more to add. Same amount of pawn islands. I'm happy with it. Same amount of pawn islands. And do you think it is, is it beneficial for you to get the b pawn to c6? Or are you... Are you neutral about it? Is it good, bad, neutral? How do you feel about that pawn getting to c6? Well, I know that in like the early to mid game that it matters more to have more central pawns, mm -hmm. but I don't know how that transitions into the later parts of the game because we have like opposite color bishops and I don't know, I, I, I can't think that far when it comes to which squares the bishops cover and so forth, if more trades happen. So I don't yes. know if there's any reason to to keep uh, the b-pawn uh, over the other pawn because of, uh, you know, I'm looking at uh, the last square being a, a light one. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, no, that's really good what you have mentioned. One thing I would add to it is that as of now, your pawn on d5 it's a central pawn and it, it stands well, but it's pretty alone. Um, mm. That's one lonely pawn there because it doesn't have a body, no C pawn, no E pawns can be protecting it. So we call those isolated pawns for for literally how isolated they are. And uh, <laughs> it's not that they are straight out bad. Of course, white's pawn structure is much worse. So this, this obviously is bad. What's in front of my king, that's, I think that everybody understands that's bad. Everybody after, um, advanced or intermediate level, let's say. But uh, the d5 pawn is not, that's that's not something that for a beginner it would be bad. It's more on an advanced level that that can become a weakness. If if I had the time to bring my pieces out 
and attack that pawn, um, it would be more difficult for you to hold on to it because you will have to be using your pieces to protect it and you don't have the possibility of, of simply pushing a pawn and, and then you can, run a, you can use your pieces for something more active than the defense of your own pawn. Um, so if I were to take the knight, you will be happy for it because then okay. this pawn joins the other one they become mm -hmm. best friends and then <laughs> then your queen and the rest of your pieces are free to go wherever they want because you no longer have to be holding on to that pawn with your pieces you don't have to be protecting it okay like a mistake that i often do is like i've noticed myself is that in positions like this i would rush that mm -hmm. i just want to win like i would just yeah take that pawn i don't care hmm. and then i would just like try to you know barbarian mode try to just win the game because it feels like I'm better and then I lose the game because I trap my own queen or something <laughs> that's that's also one way of handling it so no you're saying that you wouldn't be too scared of even giving me that pawn if it if it comes to it because you you believe that you would have a strong enough attack which sometimes can be the case so let let's let's pretend I didn't take on c6 and and you would want to give me that pawn for attack what move or moves would you be considering here for black so like in this position where you move the queen to this position yes for example then i like i would just uh lift uh, uh the the queen and this looks really uncomfortable exactly exactly um that's good thinking what would happen and we're gonna once again do this as a visualization exercise what would happen if white takes the pawn on d5 so I'm gonna draw um, white taking this pawn. I would be happy with it because I see a world where I would get a temple and I can lift my rook uh, off of that temple. Yes, that's a good first instinct. But let's also consider what is white doing after each and every move of your opponent. Let's let's see if they are threatening anything. So when when the knight when the queen lands on d5 when the queen captures the pawn. What changes in the position? Does Y threaten anything in that position? I guess if anything is just to pick up my knight and win a pawn. Uh, and as as well, my bishop is hanging. Yes, very good. So the bishop yeah. is hanging, which means that if you were to move the rook to attack my queen. It would just gobble up my, my dear, my dear bishop. No. Yes. <laughs> Right, all right. I guess that maybe there is some hidden engine line where I just where you capture and then I capture here for check and then there's like some hidden checkmate here maybe. No, I'm kidding. Well, all your right. intuition is good there, but uh, I'm gonna make this as a practice. But very good intuition. <laughs> okay, okay. So we're gonna visualize the queen on d5, and then try to see how you can attack the white king. So your bishop is hanging, but you do have the right intuition that it looks very scary around the white castle can you spot a strong move there for attack do you have any checks by the way which which checks would you consider because checks checks captures and uh, threats of mate those are some of the most forcing moves in chess well um i guess the only thing that really stands out is um you know this check check but it's covered by it's two covered two times and then I have the bishop uh, capture uh, move and um, I guess that's about it yeah okay the yes oh, or actually whoa whoa whoa, whoa. There's, there's a pin here there's a pin whoa well done <laughs> <laughs> honestly your 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 like sound that you made it kind of gave it up <laughs> I knew I was missing something Did uh, it? oh no a coach <laughs> I, I should have known that if I coach a coach, you're going to be reading every <laughs> single possible sign there. I thought I wasn't yes. helping at all. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, this is it's, it's exactly what coaching is. You know, you just read people all the time. Yes, it's, it gets obsessive. So how but, did you um, know? And, and what's going on after that check? What's going on after that check? I, I guess. Uh, hmm. Where I can follow up with another check, but there's no, uh, there's a capture as well with a check. Yeah. And then where do we go with that? Hmm. 
trying so to think what the So you do take the pawn with a check as well, right? Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That would be my plan. Or after the their sweet king has moved to h1, mm -hmm. I could also capture with the bishop. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I want to do that because it would give an additional square to the king and the, the, the rook doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's doing anything right now besides being a problem. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I want to uh, trade down in that position. Trade down in the sense that white would give the rook for your bishop? Or... Yes, yes. Because it, 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 like my instinct tells me that my bishop is doing so much more than the rook right now. Because it seems like the rook is more of a problem than uh, actually you know, being useful. But maybe I'm wrong. No, that's very interesting thinking. So you, you wouldn't... You would be a little bit concerned in case your bishop is a more powerful piece, even though the rook is supposed to be worth more than your bishop in terms of numeric value. Yes, but at the same time, I guess my mind is just forgetting the fact that the queen is on this and my bishop is actually hanging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe I, with this in mind, like if I visualize it in that way, then I guess I would just, yeah, I will, I will go with the bishop over there. Excellent. Yeah. So your move order would be, let's see if, if you can calculate it all. I'm going to see, because this is a long line. The queen goes to d5 for white, the pawn, let's see once again, this capture. White takes the pawn. You said you're giving this check, right? Yep, yep. What happens there? Let's let's say that line again. And when do you want to take the pawn on f2 with your bishop? And then the, the king only has one square, and then I would... Uh capture with uh, the bishop right after that check mm -hmm. without capturing this pawn here because I'm not covering the the last square in that position but I could also do in between moves there where I just uh, check and then I capture and then I check again and I have the same position but there's no pawn so I guess I would just repeat the same position but with me uh, having uh, captured the, the h3 pawn as well excellent wow uh I, I thought we may have to play out some of those moves for you to realize <laughs> that you can give the check, go back, and then take the other pawn too. But you already have discovered this all. Uh, this is the line that Jacob said, and very good thinking. You could take here the pawn on f2, you can take this too. And Jacob said, I can do both. I'm going to take this, then go back, then take this one. So you have gained two pawns. My king has way less protection because you have gotten rid of the one that I had on the h file. So my king is really vulnerable. What is your threat here as black? I guess um, mate. Exactly. <laughs> mate in one. <laughs> well done. You're threatening mate in one because you placed your bishop on f2 and I cannot go anywhere. I cannot run away anymore. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good job. <laughs> this is great. So in or now let's also think for the opponent. What do you think white has to do? If you were in this position playing this with the white pieces, because sometimes we do get into really bad positions ourselves. What would be your thinking? How can you make the game continue and fight? So in um, some cases I would resign. In other cases I would just uh, capture with the, the rook and the uh, uh, trade down, I guess, in this position. Yes, you can trade down. Yes, that's one of the solutions indeed to, to prevent mate. So black will have an exchange up, like black will have a rook versus a minor piece, but at least uh, white doesn't get mated. There's also, I guess, uh, maybe a queen move to uh, defend the last rank. Yes. I mean, the H rank, mm -hmm. or not, uh, it's not a rank, the H file. The H file, very good. The ranks are the other, the other way, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think. Okay, okay. I'm learning the lingo. Soon I'll be able to be like C4, C4. <laughs> and, and then the person and then working at Starbucks will be like, what are you saying? Chessy man. So I'm going to have yeah. to start worrying about my job. <laughs> no, 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 never. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Maybe that's like a timeline. You become a, a, a like a League of Legends coach and I'll cast chess events. Cool. Let's trade. Let's trade skills. <laughs> <laughs> no, but excellent. You can take the bishop or you can uh, place the queen on the h file. I'm going to make this move. Let's say I'm play now we are back to how it was. You are playing this game with the black pieces. I'm trying to survive here with the white pieces. 
What would be your thinking here again from your perspective with the black pieces? I have prevented that checkmate, but do you see a way for your attack to continue? Oh, well, that queen is stuck there forever. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, hmm. I, th I feel like I have all the time in the world to, uh, like I could do this, but I feel like you have enough squares that it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I feel like I could just also join the attack with uh, with other pieces and uh, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking either I uh, start to develop the rook or I develop the knight. I feel like the rook just seems better because mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, challenge both the bishop and the knight in the next move. Yeah, very good. I mean, yeah, the bishop and the queen, sorry. Mm -hmm. Very good so thinking. Those are the th two they have. So oh. you would want to bring the rook over here after rook e8. You're planning to rook bring the rook to e5 and attack both the queen and the bishop excellent very good thinking this this position for me would be close to resignation basically <laughs> i'll put that on my resume i beat Anna. no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> no you should put it on your resume i'm playing this with the white pieces and, and i'm in pain i'm in pain so very good job um here i think some of the the things that white would try to do is to to bail out but um let, let's see if i can i'm gonna i'm gonna trade as much as i can so one defensive resource is to try to simplify the position try to trade as much as possible especially when it comes to the queens so i would try to take this so that my my bishop will not be in this attack that you wanted to do with the rook i don't really care i'm just gonna continue with the same plan <laughs> Okay. Oh, you don't mind that I have taken your knight. I see. All right. That's interesting. Very good thinking because you, you do have the time to attack my queen. And then you can take back on c6. You can take the bishop later. Yes, yes. Now, let's once again turn the tables and try to survive from white's perspective. What do you think white should do? Do not get mated or lose immediately. Like as black, the only move that I thought that is like the most resilient is to just play uh, queen h2 and just to trade queens. Uh huh. Queen h2. Yes. Uh, that's a possibility. Other possibilities for white? And then I guess um, right now I have uh, back rank issues. I actually don't. I don't. Never mind. Never mind. I lied. Mm hmm. I lied. I forgot about my rook there that is just defending a pawn. Yeah, you still have the other rook defending your back, okay. right? True. Other than that. So queen mm. h2 is one option. Very good. Any other moves for the queen? Any other moves with the queen? Hmm. I'm just trying to make you see all the possible defensive moves for white. I guess this could be one. Yeah, excellent. It looks it looks scary because it feels like it's abandoning the h5, right? Um, mm -hmm. The queen was protecting the h5, but luckily for white, even from g4, it is covering the two squares from which the black queen could give a check. And it's also still covering the square that the rook could go to. So as as crazy and shaky as it seems for the defense <laughs> it still is holding on to to that white king and the protection of the white king very good thinking that uh, if you play queen h2 or queen g4 in both cases what's the issue for black is that white is going to trade the queens and mm -hmm. um, whether you take here so whether you take the queen on g4 or whether you allow white to take on g3 uh, by the way, which one would you choose? Would you would you take that queen on g4, or would you would you wait for white to take on g3? Because you you cannot go away with the queen, right? You cannot keep the queens on the board. Hmm. I think I would rather let you capture. Mm hmm because I need to move the bishop anyway. Yeah. And uh, I guess I would just recapture the bishop here in this position. 
very uh, good the thinking. White bishop. Excellent. That that was so important that you, what you spotted because if you take, um, as you said, you will still need to move the bishop, and you also still need time to capture the bishop on c6. So that rook move was was a um, a really good intuitive move for, to continue the attack, but you will still need to take the time to take the bishop on c6 at some point. And it's something that that uh, beginners can forget about. I, I actually should, shouldn't consider you a beginner anymore because I do <laughs> think you know more. I, you're definitely intermediate level player. Um, so for for other Pog Chins players, what would have been an issue <laughs> is that... <laughs> is that you get lost in this thought process of attacking the queen, checkmate ideas, and you forget that you still will need to take one move for taking that bishop on c6. So it's great to go for the attack, it's great to go for uh, the initiative, but you always will need to keep in mind that it's still going to cost you one more move to, t to take the bishop back that you have sacrificed. You, you still haven't taken the minor piece back. So in this case, if uh, if you were to take the queen on g4, you would have lost a piece because your bishop on f2 is hanging and you still haven't captured on c6. Right? It, you would yep, need yep. to you would need to do both. You would need to move away with the bishop and you would need to take the bishop of white. And that's also, why I don't like the the pawn placement as well. It makes my rook worse. Good. Yeah. Excellent. That's that's an additional feature. Very good. Yes. You you prefer the pawn here. And at the same time, what you said, you will need to still move the bishop. So you would capture this bishop and after the queen trade. Now, it's equal material in, when it comes to the pieces. And when it comes to pawns, how are, how are you doing in this game in terms of material count? I'm up a pawn and there's this uh, lonely pawn on the king side that uh, <laughs> I'm going to pile up on. And uh, eventually I'll just advance with all these pawns. My king is nicely placed with them, and uh, I'll enjoy a, an end game here. Exactly. This is a, an advantageous end game for what you have mentioned. You're on, you have a healthy extra pawn, and this f3 pawn will suffer. So, let's see. Let's see how this would play out in practice. I'm gonna I'm gonna make moves for white. Maybe not the most ideal moves, but I'm gonna try to continue as if I was competing in pock champs. Okay. <laughs> hmm. The lack of time control is putting myself, <laughs> putting me in a very strange mindset. Yes, uh, that that's going to be something else I also want to practice with you because I did okay. realize that most of the mistakes you made were in time pressure. So you, you normally don't make mistakes when you still have plenty of time. Very good move. What's that rook doing there? That's, uh, it's a hungry pig. <laughs> it's going to gobble everything up here. <laughs> Exactly. And it's blocking the king. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't know if you have heard of the term rooks on the second or rooks on the seventh, but that's what you are doing by intuition. Yes, yes. I think I've heard it back, and uh, that's why it came out as pigs, hungry pigs. That the rooks Better. on the seventh rank are hungry pigs. A hungry pig. <laughs> I like that term more. I like that term. I like that uh, term. Uh, it's more visual, the way you describe it. So, yeah, the hungry pig uh, here on the second uh, definitely about to gobble up a lot of pawns because my bishop is hanging um, and if I'm moving it let's just see even where can I move it I don't have too many squares I could go back to c1 which is where I'm coming from but it's very painful when one has to go back to the initial square um, or I could place it on g5 if I go to g5 what would be your thinking here well like my, my winner's instinct wants to push this pawn because my plan is to lift the rook and then threaten the bishop and then just uh, uh, just uh, check. That's wow. that's my winner's instinct. But at the same time, I have a very free pawn there and uh, I can just take that and keep it simple. Simple is good in a lot of cases. So those, those are the things that stand out. And then I guess I would sit down and calculate that this does anything to mm -hmm. send the rook and just check but uh, it doesn't look like it does anything so uh, I feel like it just moves the king to a better square so mm -hmm. I'm happier it being in the corner so those are my ideas well those are excellent ideas 
Very good job. Uh, All right. <laughs> which one would you go for in the game? If you're playing this with the black pieces, which one you play? So what time? What's my time control? <laughs> you still have two and a half minutes on your clock. Two and a half minutes. Okay, then then I will just push the pawn. I think. Push the pawn. Yes, yes. If I had said you still have um, a minute thirty seconds, would it have changed your mind? Uh, or honestly, the other no. Way around? No. I, I the see pawn. them. I see those time controls in the same bracket. That that's little time for me. Little time. <laughs> so, when it comes to time controls, um. Because um, I, I was going to ask you about time controls in general. I think you have played most of your recent games with the time control of 10 minutes. Yes, yes. And no increment. No or was increment. there any? 10 minutes, no, no increment. increment. Yes, yes. Would that be your favorite time control? Is that where you're comfortable or what do you consider your favorite? I feel like 15 with 10 seconds increment. That's where I feel like I can always win games, even if I'm like down a rook, at least in my like uh, ranking bracket. Mm -hmm. And at 10 minutes, yeah. like I was just playing 10 minutes because poke champs is in 10 minutes. Yes. And uh, I tend to like forget about time because I'm like talking and getting distracted, yes. petting my cats or something. So, <laughs> so, so I'm just practicing the, the, the time control that makes the most sense, like what, what I'm going to compete in. Excellent. No, that's very good. I think um, for the 10 minute time control, you will be fine, especially since there's there's increment. Um, the oh, pop really? champs time control. Yeah. Uh, actually, let me. I keep forgetting if it was 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, and I have been commentating on so many of the games, but I, I number memory. I don't <laughs> know. I don't know if it happens to other casters too. Does it happen to you? With, or is like my numeric memory is terrible. I've seen so many games. I can recall the positions. But uh, when it comes to time controls or dates, or maybe it's just me and that I'm bad with numbers, it might not. Or well, dates, I, I I don't even know. Like we made a meeting for twenty second, and that's like the only date that I've remembered for the past month. <laughs> like I'm okay. terrible with dates. Then I terrible don't feel with days. too bad. I don't know what day. <laughs> if you told me, you know, uh, to guess what day it is, it would just be a gamble. Could be Sunday for me. Could be, could be Tuesday. I have no idea. Okay, that, that, that makes me feel somewhat better because I'm like, <laughs> did Fog Chim's event finish just a few weeks ago? And I, I'm not even sure what exactly was the increment. It was 10 plus 5, so 5 second increment okay. per move. But what will be something, if you get into the next Fog Chim's, what you will definitely need to practice then are the shorter time controls. Because in case of a tie, so I think with the 10 plus 5 con time control, you will be fine. Uh, we're going to still mm -hmm. practice, but... Um, there's a, a three minute sudden death game in the championship bracket, oh. which is way faster and there's no increment there. Plus the Armageddon. So there were two different uh, shorter time controls. There was the Armageddon, okay. which was five versus four. So white had five minutes, black had four minutes. But in case of a draw, black would move on or black would get the, yes, yes. the full point in that case. Um, in the championship and constellation bracket, it was a sudden death blitz game, which was three minutes, no increment. Um, and re regardless of what will they do for the future events, for sure there will be a shorter time control, whether it's Armageddon or sudden death. So I think what you will you will need to start practicing a lot are blitz games, because there okay. will be some kind of blitz format there will be for sure as tiebreaker. So it won't it will not be the main, but as a tiebreaker, imagine that you're playing extremely well in the ten plus five, but when it comes to one match, when it's one one. It would be such a pity if you if you cannot perform yes, well yes. because of the, the shorter games. Yes, I, I guess my plan would be to just not try to win, to just get a solid position and just play fast moves and then yeah. just just win on time. <laughs> I guess would be my thought process. <laughs> Have you played much of Blitz online or uh, do you recall? I've only like I think in this year I played one Blitz game and that was a sub battle between Gotham Chess and uh, and can't recall who and i won that game did you so play for was, levy's team uh i played for the other team oh interesting so levy was very upset i have very a sub battle on thursday against levy if you want to play on my team okay i'll join <laughs> in. i'll join in awesome i'll let you know what time is it if you're around <laughs> that would be an honor. what rating bracket would you put me in then well, I'm, I'm 1150 on chess.com. So you're 1150 on chess.com, but I think you play better. <laughs> but I'm gonna hide that fact. I'm gonna hide the fact that okay, you play okay. better than your rating. Okay, okay, that's just gonna be my life goal in chess, just to ruin chess uh, sub battles for for for, for Le Levy. 
Levi or Levi? It's Levi, right? It's Levi, yes. It's Levi. Levi. But a lot of people call him Levi and just don't know the how jeans, it has... yeah? Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, you will definitely be a great under 1200 board because I think you play better than that. Perfect. Awesome. Now that we have discussed how we're going to beat Gotham Chess in sub battles, after Bishop <laughs> G5, you said you would play A4 because you want to bring the rook here, attack the bishop, and then the rook comes to H5 as well. And my king is looking like it's trouble. Um, and I think that's great thinking. It's great that you have this attacking instinct. I think uh, now that I see your playing style more, I'll definitely be helping you more along the, these lines that you're an aggressive attacking player. <laughs> you're looking for checkmate attacks and going getting to the king, whatever it takes. Yes, indeed. I, I watch too many too many high level games and I pretend to be pretend to be that and then I just blunder everything. That is that is my trend. <laughs> but it, it's great that you like this kind of chess. So this is something we should be aiming for also when it comes to your opening choices. But I think for now, opening is not that important um, because you okay. do know some openings. But if you ever want to learn a new opening, it's certainly something to consider that you have an attacking style, you like dynamic positions. Um, so that's great. That's great to know. Um, I will still, I'll still try to survive here, but okay. I don't know how long I can. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a random puck champs move to try to get my king out of the corner at least. as instinct. Well, that doesn't change anything, so I'm just going to continue. Yeah, uh, that's the issue. If I were to play um, this pawn push, visualization, uh, pawn goes to f4, protects the bishop. What would you play there? What would be your thinking there? I would... Um, I would just uh, remove uh, the bishop from that square with the pawn. Mm -hmm. And then I can just uh, lift the rook anyway, which was my plan. I don't care about the bishop. Yeah, which and then it on? also, uh, yeah. I would push the the, the, the yeah the h7 pawn. Exactly, and you were gonna add that that pawn push is also. You were saying about the pawn push that it attacks oh. the bishop, and it also. Uh, yeah, I don't have bank rank issues if that ever comes up. Excellent! Very good job. Good thinking Yay. that that one should also <laughs> care about that. Well done. Lost too many games. <laughs> <laughs> no, back rank mates are so common. That I, as a kid, I always lost, lost or won games with back rank mates. That was the that was the main thing in scholastic chess for sure. <laughs> what does this bishop have to do? Um, where can it go? So there's only one really boring square, and it's over there. The, exactly. The D square, D eight. Yes. Looks very sad. Very sad. What would you do here? I'll just continue with my, my plan. Nice. I'm very scared. I'm really scared. And I don't have many good options here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna think that if I bring a rook into the game that might help me survive. Will it help me? No. <laughs> no. Because you are threatening <laughs> right now. Checkmate. Checkmate. Exactly. Very good job with this rook coming to g2. That will be checkmate in one. How can white survive? Uh, let's say turning the tables. You're playing this with the white pieces. You don't wanna. Do, you don't wanna resign. You don't wanna lose immediately. How do you fight on? Uh, <laughs> okay. Mm. I guess you'll survive for another move if you move the, <laughs> the, the rook up. And you block my my uh, my other rook. Uh, that's that's survival for one move. Mm -hmm. Anything then, else that can keep the rook alive? Keep the rook alive. Hmm. I guess you can just move up like that. That sounds more reasonable than my <laughs> my idea. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Oh what no! Did I just press. Oh. That happens to me all the time. Wait, let me try to find where we are. <laughs> whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. He, we are here. I'm, I'm going to promote okay, okay. this because it happens to me all the time. But that's my bad. Now now we have it here. I was pressing my arrow keys. I don't know why. <laughs> so that move gives a square for the king to go to. And at the same time, you're attacking the bishop. Very good thinking there. How would you continue as black? I'm, I'm going to keep turning the tables here. Hmm. 
guess I would just hmm I, I, I want you to move in the right direction closer to your rook and then put my other rook on uh, the final rank. But I, I guess the move that I have in mind is just to uh, check with my rook that is on uh, the E square, like here. Mm -hmm. So I only have one square, which is this. And then I have no continuation. So that was, <laughs> well, let's go back in time. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could take our own moves back sometimes, right? <laughs> but you have a great position. I'm, I'm sure you, you still would consider this advantageous for you, even if there's no immediate win. Hmm. So let's think of a plan. You, you said that you would love to give a check on the back rank, right? With the rook. So I guess I will just, I will just capture here and take it easy. But never mind, my, my, my guy is gone then. But <laughs> wait, wait. If you capture us, oh no. Okay, it's terrible, it's terrible. <laughs> abort, <laughs> abort. <laughs> abort the mission. <laughs> well, that's a great line to calculate. The only issue at chess is that as lo if you play this move, then it's already happening, right? So yes. <laughs> we, we will always need to visualize that position before it's actually on the board. So rook takes b2, you have already said, this is promising because you did realize that if this if this rook wasn't hanging, then you do have this checkmate, right? So it's not it's the only the only problem for black is that this rook is hanging because rook h1 otherwise would would finish the game. But you also have noticed that if you move the rook away, white has the time to take the bishop, and that uh, rook will in the end protect the king. So. How can we achieve a position in the future? Not right now. Let's say you have a few moves of achieving a position where either you can protect this rook or you can protect the bishop and then move the rook away. Can you find a plan? Well, hmm. I guess what comes to mind is... I, I, I can maneuver this bishop out of the way, except not through that direction. I'm thinking here, and then if you want to capture, I will capture with the rook, and it will be all fine. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking as well, maybe there's some dark technology in such a position where I sacrifice my bishop. Wow. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't think this completely through. Let, let's, let's visualize that, um, if you're already thinking of bishop b1, the dark technology. Right. Would that work? <laughs> So there is there's three options to capture with the rook with the king or to not capture at all mm -hmm. not capture at all seems silly mm -hmm. so i'm thinking in a world where the, the only problem i could see is if it's captured with the king uh, it can't be captured with the king so it mm -hmm. has to be captured with the rook and then mm -hmm. the question is do you have time to defend uh, the 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 back uh, the last square here yeah the the g1 square with the rook uh, i would have to capture here first then go and you would have time i believe mm -hmm. or actually would you would you have time hmm would you have time let's think about that boom 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 yeah you have time yeah Excellent. so we don't like we don't like the dark technology <laughs> we, but we it's go good for... that you have thought of it Another thing I was going to ask you here, because this is good. It's very good that you notice that white can bring the rook back just in time to prevent checkmate. Imagine the rook wasn't on f3. We're going we're gonna to pretend it's on, um, well, I've got to say, c4. Um, can, you, can you picture the position as if the rook from f3, it wasn't going to be there, but it's on c4, the other red square. I just want you to try to protect that position for white to defend this is the king move yeah the king move yes so one issue with these type of checkmates is that whenever the king can get close enough to the rook um you will always have to go back with the check king goes away you go away with the rook again to threaten mm. checkmate king goes back so it's a kind of back and forth 
um, because the king is ve still very close to your rooks. So in this position, what other ways could you picture as a solution when it comes to either protecting your bishop or your rook on g2 to threaten mate on h1? I guess I can just push the pawn all the way. Exactly what happens if you push? I just will eventually go all the way home and I'll defend the, <laughs> the rook with the pawn, I guess. And then luckily I will already defend this square nicely with the bishop, so this bishop can't capture it. And as, uh, this pawn will be so much more worth than just one point. <laughs> excellent, excellent thinking. You push the pawn and then you will keep pushing. So you're two squares away from protecting your rook and threatening checkmate. What can white do about this? If white notices what you want to do, can white prevent it? I guess if... Hmm. Well, this pawn is very, very well placed for me, so there is no, no action like that. But uh, this rook might be even too late. Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking if there is a potential to uh, end up being behind behind this pawn, and uh, maybe there's some counterplay to to threaten my king. But I, I don't know if this rook can even move. I guess my issue here is it's hard for me to imagine how much time it takes uh, to, to make these counter moves. Yeah, because hmm. white has only two moves basically, right? For you it takes one, two to get to h3 yeah. with the pawn and then you're threatening mating one already. So white does not have much time. It has to be like some, some, some check here or something. Maybe maybe move the bishop so that this this Rook can check right away or something like this. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be the plan. Yes. And then maybe just activate the bishop somehow. Maybe this square will be useful somehow to block. Yeah, and very good thinking. Yes, to try to give checks on the back rank, try to bring the bishop back. So that's, that's good that you have discovered some potential defensive resources. We'll see if it works because it, your position as black is extremely, <laughs> extremely powerful. So... Yes, yes. You would, I assume, push the pawn, or would you be uh, worried about this check? Would you be thinking about what happens if that rook goes to the back rank? No, I'm not worried at all. Not so right. I would just keep pushing. Yeah. Yes, because after the check, you can just simply... I'll just move up, no problem. Move up, and I don't have a follow-up. Unfortunately, my bishop is a dark squared bishop, so I don't even have a chance of attacking your king with the bishop, and my other rook is very far from the back rank or po any potential checks. Very good job. This is, for me, a disaster position. I don't <laughs> have a defense. I'm going to try as last attempt. Actually, wait. No, your idea gave me an idea. Look at this move. I didn't see that either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, you gave me an idea. But um, even like this, I don't think I'm going to survive for too long. Okay. Hmm. I didn't see this. <laughs> 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 Neither did I, to be honest. Well, I just thought that that square might be useful. <laughs> That's all. Honestly, uh, I will, we'll look at that visual move, but I was thinking, whatever white does, you will push the pawn in your threatening mate, and it's game over. Because now if I come back with the bishop, you'll place the rook where you wanted, this rook is protected, and the other rook will take on g1, and it's checkmate next move. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is curtains. But if white moves the bishop back a move earlier before the pawn before the pawn is on h3, it means that the rook is still not protected, so you cannot play rook h1 just yet. Well, this spawns a lot of ideas. Hmm. It's, it's, it's so odd, because my... My rooks are defending each other. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm thinking maybe the best course of action is just to continue with the same plan and I'll have a pawn that is so pushed that uh, I'll be able to to win with being material down. Mm -hmm. But but the way you said it's completely winning for black, even in this position, it makes, it makes me feel like there's something better. <laughs> I would be thinking it should still be winning for black, but honestly, this bishop g1 is pretty annoying. And I didn't see it. You played that bishop move out of intuition. And now white has a decent defense. Hmm. What would be the line if you were to push the pawn? Because that's that's an idea you mentioned. What happens there? Let's let's visualize that. Well, the problem with that is that my pawn would be hanging, right? Yes, after so that's taking terrible. on h2. And then I lose. Yes. Thank Very goodness. good. I'm just going to play it out, but excellent job that you saw it blindfold that after the trades, that pawn is gone, the rook is gone, and, and the game is and gone. It comes with a check. Yes. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Suddenly, from a winning position, we are completely <laughs> lost. Never resign. <laughs> <laughs> Never resign. So how can like get out of this? Now we need to turn we need to turn the tables also when it comes to our our handling of the game. Sometimes when you make a mistake from a winning position and, and suddenly it looks like, okay, this rook is hanging, you can't move it to h1 because the other rook is hanging. So we need to find a move that bails out and doesn't lose material. Oh, I guess there is, um, is, is this the best move in the position? It's so boring. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very boring. <laughs> it's boring, but sometimes we gotta bail out, right? Because right now okay. white is threatening the rook. That's so, Christian bailout. <laughs> rook rook D two. What does this move do? What, why is it saving the situation? You have to. Uh, I, I guess you either have to move the rook. Uh, uh, to get out of harm's way or trade, and I'll just recapture with the rook that's in danger. Yeah. If you don't, uh, if you move defensively, I can just move out of danger, and I'll be careful. Be happy. Oh, <laughs> 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 say intuition with the rook move again. <laughs> I, I I guess in a, in this case, I have also the option of doing this. That's a better option. Be yes. Yes, yes. It looks way better. <laughs> <laughs> it's made next move. Very good job. Yeah, rook d2 is a bailout move um, to save the rook. So as you said, if white takes, you can take with the rook that was hanging and you are still a pawn up. This is a very strong pass pawn. You, you were talking about that, the, the pick on the second rank gobbling up all the pawns and it's happening. It's happening here. So that's great. I think for white, the best would be but okay, this is this is because I've played chess my whole life, so I would take this rook, let you take that rook, and then I can take your bishop too. And we end mm. up trading everything and I would be hoping to to somehow make a draw in this rook end game, which is much more boring than a checkmate position, I agree. <laughs> yes, yes. But it gives us a chance to practice your end games. What do you think of this okay. end game? Would you still have uh, would you still want to try to win it do you think you have winning chances oh uh, yeah this feels pretty comfortable mm -hmm. because my next move feels so natural and uh, i think i'll have an easier time getting into a better position with my king because i have two pawns to defend me mm -hmm. from the rook checks what would be your candidate most here in this position what do you think would be strong i would go there mm -hmm. and i can't think of anything else this just feels by far the best Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you a tough question. And that is, okay. how do you think this king and pawn and game would be if we were to trade rooks? I think I would take it. Mm -hmm. I think the distribution of pawns is just in my favor. Let's play it out. This is actually very difficult. King and pawn in games. Um, I don't know how you feel about king and pawn in games. Have you had uh, have you had um, many occasions 
rare occasions when it appears in your games? Uh, yeah, and I, I guess in 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 this in this ranking, a lot of uh, people tend to uh, blunder uh, these end games. Mm -hmm. So, so my instinct would be to just move the king up into a more central position, and then depending on where you move, uh, I'm going to try to strike this pawn, and then uh, three against two, I can win enough time to push uh, these two pawns on the king side all the way. Mm -hmm. Good thinking. That's, Good thinking. That's my thought process. Yeah. Let's try to carry it out. How would you execute that plan? I would go g6. Very good. Activating the king instantly. I'm gonna try to follow and try to get my king to the center if you let me. And then I would just boom. Excellent. Now, as you said, I have three pawns versus two on the queen side, so I'm gonna try to push them and create pass pawns if I can. And then, I guess in this position, I would just capture. Mm -hmm. I need to take back. And then, hmm. I'm thinking that I want to push f6 because I want to uh, go uh, g5 and then I want to recapture with the pawn instead of recapturing with the king because I don't want to lose my central position. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go for that. Okay. Um, I'm going to... I completely blundered the game. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were analyzing a lot of uh, lines and you would have won it way earlier... Um, if it wasn't that we ended up making the best defense also for white. So if if this was an actual tournament game, you would have won in the middle game already, I'm pretty sure. This is just this is just to test other fields as well. And I was curious about your endgame skills. So I don't mind that we ended up playing this position because I'm curious how would you react to a move like this? Let's say I push this pawn. Seems kind of odd to me. Why is it odd that I push that pawn? Because I would try to just uh, get to the square with the king. As white? Like... In instead of pushing you... Here you mean that as white you would come try to come here with the king? I, I guess I, I'm not sure if, if I would go instantly here, but I would want to be in this square instead. I see. And I'm not sure why. I just feel my, my thought process, my intuition tells me that the king is placed closer to everything from this yeah. position. Let, let's take a look at that. Let, let's take a look at that because I think you have definitely the right intuition for that. Usually you want to activate the king as much as possible. In end games, the king is becoming a very important and very active piece. So you do have the right intuition. Only issue for white is that you can't really abandon the defense of the pawn. But if black wants to trade, and, and that was your idea, right? You want yes. to push. So black, if black pushes g5, white mm -hmm. needs to take it because now this pawn is hanging, too many pieces attacking. White takes, how do you take back? You said you were going to take back with the pawn. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that means that now white doesn't need to stay on e3 because there's no more pawn that has to be protected, right? So in a sense, that frees the white king that you no longer need to be protecting the pawn on f4. Does it mean that white has the time to get into black's position, capture the pawn, and then push? Uh, my my pawn is quicker than your pawns, so mm -hmm. I would just keep the king on this side and look to trade uh, the, the pawns uh, and push the pawns uh, while hoping that... Uh, the, the tempo will land correctly for for my king to 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 block uh, the, the 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 pawn that uh, black is pushing. Exactly. So if the king starts marching toward the black pawn, you would react with which move exactly for the plan? Excellent. And if my king goes to c five, I will not even I, play I it. I just keep going. I keep, just keep going. going. Keep going. Keep going all the way home. Exactly. Do you know what's a pawn square? Have you heard of that term? The square uh, yes, of... yes. Excellent. The, can you draw it? I, where, where it is exactly? I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume uh, this would be the pawns, pawn square now. Yes. 
And this is what uh, the king can reach. Yeah, very good. Is it correct? So <laughs> for those who, have, who may not have heard of the term, um, the pawn square or the square of the past pawn, how would you describe what does this mean, this square that you have drawn? What is this about? So I guess hmm. I would have to think. <laughs> sure, take your time. Like, I guess the distance from the pawn, uh, the distance from the pawn, does it equate? Well, it's just a square. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's just a square. <laughs> it's just a square. It just turns into a square. Yes, it is a square. It looks like a square. But why is it important? What's the purpose of it? Because with, with the square in place here, uh, the, the white king has enough time to, to reach it if I all, use all my moves in a row to, to push it. Exactly. If, if, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> if you the square that you have drawn, if the white king is in that square, it means that the white king would be able to catch the pass pawn. If the king is outside, as if, as if white plays this move, it's already outside the square. And what happens to the, the square is that with every pawn push, it shrinks. It just gets smaller and smaller. So it's more and more difficult to be inside the square the more advanced the pass pawn is. Very good job. So this white king has no chance of making it back to the square. It's so small. It's so far. Yeah. GG. GG. Where De did you go? Definitely GG. You messed up. <laughs> now, if white realizes that he's going in the wrong direction and that you need to stay in the square. Let's suppose White comes back with the king, panicking and starts rushing back. What would you do? Mm. The first thought I had was to push the pawn. Mm -hmm. And then if you waste the move to go even deeper in the position, I will be able to uh, just move my king towards the other pawn and gobble these pawns. Mm -hmm. Correct. What happens if you push and white pushes too? I will also push. I don't want to challenge. You don't want to trade the pawn because if you trade, what 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 would be this position if we were to trade pawns? It would be... Mm, I w it would just be a draw. Yes. Because... Is it a draw? Am I in the square? <laughs> yeah, where is the I square? I'm in the square. I I'm in the square. <laughs> good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all good, all good. You're in the square, but it would mean that the black king will start going toward the white pass pawn and the white king will go for the black pass pawn and it's a draw in the end very good job good but it's good that you checked it if you are in the square imagine <laughs> imagine you're not well it's done disaster. so you don't want to trade because uh, you you're still trying to win the game what happens of course before you push you need to check where is the square after white pushes right so you need to imagine mm. that you push and they push where is the square and if you're getting into it in time it would be pshu, pshu, pshu. i'm in time is it that big the square after white pushes oh after white pushes no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 <laughs> yeah so where where would it be and after white makes a move it's black okay. stern so i would have to so we are just talking about this and this. What happens there? Am I not on time? You drew well, the square. I, are you in time? Well, I wouldn't be on time, but I'm thinking if there's like some tempo for me to gain by pushing my own pawn and then the king has to move or something like that. But maybe that's just losing and then the, the pawn will just go home. Why hmm. do you? What makes you think that you are not in time? I guess because I'm just outside of our uh, this beautiful square. <laughs> yes, you're outside of it. 
when white goes b5, but it's black to move. Which Am means... I on time? Oh, wait, is the square rule like... Is it... On, on whose move <laughs> does, the, does the square rule apply? It's tricky about whose move, right? But the important thing is that when it's your move, you need to get into the square. Oh. <laughs> Misclicked. <laughs> okay. So you need to... It, it's okay if you're not in the square straight away, but you have to get in it. If not, it's too late. Oh. Right? Okay, okay. So it's like Fortnite. Yes. <laughs> not that I know much of Fortnite, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I, I don't play much Fortnite either. I've never played in my life. I just know that the map shrinks. Oh, we are still in the map. Exactly. I played once. <laughs> Alexandra Botas taught me, and that's the one time I played. But I, I enjoyed it the one time I played. I think I need more guidance, though, to, to actually know what I'm doing. It's a very, it's such a complicated game. Yeah. I, I tried it once, and I don't understand why there's building involved. Like why, why are people building on this battlefield, yeah. it's uh, very confusing. It's confusing to me too, but you're right that it's like the map shrinking. You're just in time to, <laughs> to not be hit by the storm. So every time the pawn moves, you're getting, you're getting still within the circle, the safe zone, and you're catching the pawn. That's mm -hmm. important. That's important that before you push, you do check, just double check that, that this pawn is not running too fast. Okay, okay. So what happens if white plays this king move, attacks the pawn on c4 and wants to... My, my brochacho here on the left just pieces out all the way. Exactly. Exactly. He left, he left the map. He left the left map. Left the zone. <laughs> you need to run back. White could still run back, but then this move didn't make sense in the first place, right? Because now yes. the white king has to come back. The only thing is that now white could try to go and attack your pawn. What do you think you would play here? How do you see this end game? I just uh, now because my this pawn is just too far pushed, I would be happy to defend it here. Mm -hmm. So you're not letting me approach your pawn and capture it. Yes, yes. Um, the only issue, of course, would be that if you go toward your pawn, that means that when I push and you, you have drawn this square, right? then now your yes, yes. king is out of the map. Is that the case? It's okay, because I'm playing a different game over here. Okay. This, game, <laughs> this is the championship game over here on the left. Okay. <laughs> I see. I cannot scare you. All right. What would be your move? Well, I guess I would just... Uh, I want to place myself here. Mm -hmm. And then... But it doesn't doesn't work that way because you have a pawn so you don't have to move your king right hmm i guess i i just i just tag along and i move with the move with the pawn and i just push the pawn mm -hmm. that would be my plan exactly yes. so you you come to this square with the king first why do you think it's important that you play that move first and not the pawn push? What's the difference? Because I would just lose the game here. Yes, because if you play now this king move, what shall Y do in this position? Just... Exactly. Well done. It that be this, dead. Is this opposition or what's, what's, the, what's the name? Yeah, opposition is, is this when the, the kings are in front of each other on the same color square. But very, okay. very close to it. Here it's super important the move you played because it means that now white is blocking that pawn forever, right? You cannot mm. chase that away. And who is going to get into the map of the other pawn? Um, winter is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't build anything here. I, I, I build the bridge maybe. <laughs> well done. Th this would suddenly be lost for black. And for that reason, your move is way stronger. Now the white king cannot do the same. You're controlling that square, so white cannot make it back here. Uh, th for that reason, white should try to push their pawn. What's next for you? Boom. Boom, because now if the white king comes here and wants to go to g1. No problem, no problem. Excellent, very good job. 
it does feel like you did study your King and Pawn and games too. It's it's Magnus Carlsen, you know. I just I taught him. No I'm kidding, but <laughs> it's it's just it's still like now in this format, it's so easy to see how fragile things are. Mm -hmm. But when I'm playing, it I just feel so dominant, and I think it comes from like league. Like if you're like ten zero in league, you tend to like. You die a couple of times, there's no problem, you're still ahead. Yeah. You just kind of enjoy yourself. Yes. And I, I think I tend to do that just a tad bit too much. I see. So you would be a bit careless in, yes, in that yes. sense. Yes. So I'm pushing. I'm still not giving up. I'm about to promote. Oh. Are you scared? Oh, this is a check. No oh, problem. Damn. Uh, Boom. No problem. Um, and I can still promote next move. Can you stop me? What is the most elegant uh, spot I can I can do this with a check? I, I have a lot of ways to prevent this. Okay, no I'm not gonna resign all. until I have a hope to promote. Which now you are stopping me from. But what if I get this pawn too? Will I have chances? Hmm. Nah. Okay, I'm no gonna take that pawn and see. If you can, if you can convert this easily, as the final task. It's it's weird because I find it easier to checkmate with a rook than it is with a queen. Really? Wait a second. Yeah. Here, I, I think I'll just push to make it a bit more complex for you, but I'm pretty sure you will find checkmate soon anyway. Okay, excellent. Here. I'll just get the pawn out of the way so it's uh, less confusing for me. Mm -hmm. Good thinking. Okay, I'm gonna still try to promote in case you let me. You, you really don't want to let me. Ah. ah, that's sad. That's really sad. Bit the hands. <laughs> and then. Hmm. Worried about the stalemate. I'm <laughs> looking at the stalemate. My last hope. My last hope. <laughs> I think. Um... This feels right for me. Mm -hmm, because unfortunately I still have this one square and then okay I'm gonna come here and then the stalemate is coming this is why I find the rook so much easier because it's just you make a square another square and then you trap the king and then that's it hmm I guess if I okay, all right. I still have one square, unfortunately. And then the stalemate is coming again. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hmm. I feel very silly. It's okay. This if you get to solve positions that are way more complex than this, it feels unnecessary to go and, and learn the checkmate pattern for queen and king. So let's see if we, if we can figure it out on your own. And then I'll show you the easiest mm -hmm. pattern so that you don't even have okay, to think okay. next time. That, that will be useful. So you're taking a lot of squares away from my king right now. As, as yeah, I'm just thinking what is what is the mm -hmm. way for me to suffocate the most space. Yeah. But uh, I'm also thinking I'm going to stalemate. Because I need to do a queen move. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I'll just go over here. Okay. I'm gonna place the king here. Oh, the stalemate, stalemate's lingering in the position everywhere. <laughs> it is. One bad uh, king move, and it's, uh, it's it's terrible. I guess. I wonder if the pos problem is that my queen is too close. Good thinking. And then I'm just gonna let's say we placed it uh, over here and mm -hmm. see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna come here with the king. And then I'm going to make do a waiting move so your king moves back, and then I'm gonna move my king closer. Ah, that's how you wanna go with the king. So I'm gonna come here now that you told me. <laughs> <laughs> you told me your plan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so my, my king needs, maybe my queen needs to be in that square. I'm going to come back. Oh, for a draw? <laughs> <laughs> do you, That's what do I miss about liches, that you can... Like that? Do you get yeah, the opponent very like often. <laughs> I, honestly, I do it myself. So <laughs> I, I like the fact about liches that you can uh, ask for a, a move back. No, please, please. Oh, there's Bundle a remove back on, on yeah, the yeah, yeah. that you can ask for. I didn't know. You can ask so for So your opponent it. has no. to accept the, the take back. Yes, yes. I and sometimes think. you show mercy and then hmm. you know, if you're feeling nice on the day. Hmm. I didn't know that feature. I'm going to try over here. Okay. How can I get still made still? Let me think. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. Here. Just double checking for any poison. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we'll be fine. Okay, I'm gonna come here. My, my king has approached finally. All these stalemates. That's all I'm seeing. <laughs> oh no. I'm hoping. And then I guess now I can just push you down the board all the way. Okay. That unfortunately seems to be working. Then I guess, okay. Well. GG, you did it. Oh, I was I was worried because the check sound came out, not the checkmate sound. Because <laughs> you just your rating pop I was like, did, did I fuck up? <laughs> I think it's just the analysis board feature, but well okay, done, okay. You, you, you worked it out in the end, you, you managed. You managed, but we're gonna make it easier for your next game just so that you don't have to okay. make so many moves. Basically, you were doing very well. Like all these moves, uh, you got the pawn, you got me to to the A file. So basically, you want the king to be on the edge of the board. So all that was great. But then um, your issue was that you were even too close with your queen. That's what you said, right? You're taking yeah. away even too many squares and you could never bring the king because then it's actually stalemate. I have nowhere to go. So one thing you can do is that you push me to the edge as you did. Everything was perfect until then. And then just one little trick. You're gonna place the queen here. So it's cutting me. Uh, you, I can never abandon the edge, but I still have these two squares forever. So you're gonna keep yes, the yes. queen at this distance um, where I have the corner and one more square. So I can move back and forth. Even if your king was at the other side of the board, hmm. you just leave the queen there on this square. You bring it close and then it's checkmate. Because I, st I will always have those two squares, one each. Hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was like a eureka moment when I <laughs> finally placed the queen so on that file. I was like, this is exactly. so easy. <laughs> yeah, you, ju you, you just need the queen um, to keep me on the edge. It could be anywhere else too. Like you could also, let's say, um, well, in which position? Like you could have done this here too. As soon as you can, just bring the queen 
to the file that will keep me forever on the edge and then then mm. you can bring the king closer but you don't need your queen too close because that's when stalemate can happen okay okay yeah, i was i was trying to do like like i was trying to checkmate the same way i would do it with a rook yes that was my instinct well, yes yeah. was very yeah. off because i realized the problem of uh, covering the diagonal and uh, the stalemate yeah yeah just use it as a rook but um, actually this feature of the queen that it doesn't let me to a6 either is just making the space for me very very restricted so I only mm. have these two squares and that's enough I'm already encaged and you just need to bring now the king close and checkmate well done I thought oh, you have that's... done very well I'm gonna give Thank you homework you. I'm gonna give you homework Jacob if you're good with that okay all right I'll homework. need to see you playing blitz games okay is that okay no can, problem. Can three minutes games. Play? Three minutes, no increment. Okay. And I'm gonna check your games. You'll need to let All me right. know when you have played Blitz. A Cu couple of games. I know you have a busy schedule, so I'm not gonna tell you to play 50 games, but a couple of Blitz games. And you okay. let me know once you have played them so that I can check your games and, and I'll tell you about them next time. If we have another session, I'm gonna tell you okay. about your Blitz games next time. All right. Is I feel very deal? chessy today, so I think uh, <laughs> I might just uh, play them all today. Excellent, excellent. If you're gonna keep streaming, I, I'll talk to my audience now, but if you're gonna be on for a while, I'll, I might end up going over to, to your channel with my viewers. All right, all right. That sounds like a, an easy deal. I'll play a couple <laughs> of Blitz matches. <laughs> excellent, but I think you really did well. I'm impressed with your level. We'll just need to work on that time management too, especially now that okay. we, we know that Blitz may not be your forte just yet, but you still have okay. time. You still have time. Let's also keep it a secret that uh, let's just tell everyone that I'm terrible. You're terrible. I'm um, terrible. Jacob, you're I should such be lowest seed. Player. You're a <laughs> terrible player. Your, your rating is inflated. Did you buy your rating points? <laughs> Honestly, where do they sell them? I want to buy too some like few hundred rating points. Can is that like <laughs> is there a market for that? <laughs> well, now you're getting so harsh. <laughs> <laughs> getting all sad now <laughs> no you really did great but Thank i don't know yet much. how your blitz skills are and that can be a huge difference for instance uh, a dog dog did very well in puck champs too when it came to like he he learned a lot um both hafu and dog dog were very hard working uh, training every day they were the yeah. two most committed players but hafu was way better at um, at being practical too and she kept playing blitz on her streams while dog dog was mainly learning and uh, he practiced, but he would practice mainly the, the 10, 10 plus 5 games. So in oh. Blitz, he did struggle a lot more. And it, it's important that it's such a short time control, Armageddon or Blitz. So 5 minutes or 3 minutes, no increment. You gotta, you need to get used to it because he would want to find the perfect moves, the perfect line. But you don't have time at some point to just calculate everything. You've got to go with your intuition. I don't want to be uh, the Grishuk of... Uh of pop champs <laughs> just run out of time all the time yeah. better positions i don't know how he does it he is addicted to time <laughs> pressure he's a three-time world blitz champion like he's crazy good at blitz really? yeah <laughs> he's a three-time world blitz champion but even if you've seen him in classical not just rapid but classical chess starting with 90 minutes he would still use all his time always it's just My goodness i don't know how he, or why it's it feels like he needs it, that adrenaline rush. <laughs> Maybe he just has like a really vivid imagination. He's hmm. like thinking of some series that he watched and then, well, <laughs> my time is gone. Because that happens to me. Really? <laughs> yes, yes. Just start thinking about something else. Did they pay the taxes? Aww. And then time is gone. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> the, the mind wanders and there's so <laughs> many thoughts that come and go when, during, during games. Uh, that don't help us find the best moves. Yeah. So no, I'm going to sure. give you that homework and I hope to get, see your Blitz games. And, and also, um, I'm always happy to help you in the future too. I hope that you found this session useful. I'm only just learning about your playing style and I think mm. I know now a lot more the kind of player you are and where can I help you more. No, this uh, really got me like super excited for chess again because like when we started talking, then like I was playing a lot and then now it kind of dipped. Uh, the like recent uh, couple of weeks but now I'm like I really want to play I want to get into it uh, and it was very nice to hear that some of the like that my thinking is 
some of the things are right, some of the things are wrong. Because uh, sometimes I'm sitting there like, is everything I know wrong? Is this so tough sometimes when there's no guidance, just an engine telling you like, yeah, you should have captured this pawn here, sacrificed the rook, and yeah. then you would have been in a winning position after 11 moves. And it's like, yeah, it doesn't really, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's confusing sometimes. So this yeah. was super helpful. Thank you very much. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad it was helpful. And, and the, on a final note, because I saw you uh, click on the analysis tool on chess.com when you were playing on chess.com mm -hmm. on, your, on your stream, it does help to point out if there's a big mistake. So like the red moves, of course, that's that's always great to look at the blunders. But sometimes it would compare moves like you play the second best or the third best and the first best <laughs> would be just some ridiculous line, as you said. So don't worry about those. Okay. Um, you should only be worried if your games have red moves, so the big blunders. Anything okay. else that the engine points out, they are such tiny nuances that they don't really matter in a practical game. Don't worry about them. Okay. And is there a reason to like, uh, like if I have a high accuracy in a game, is that a thing to celebrate or is it yes. like whatever? Yes, exactly. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to bring up your profile and show all my viewers your accuracy because it's crazy. You're very good okay. at that. Have oh, you really? seen? Have you seen on your games the accuracy? No, I haven't seen. <laughs> well, you, you better check. Some of your games are crazy good. I'm gonna open your stream and just check. Like, I don't know how to open that. <laughs> this third game. If, if you go to, I can teach you. If you go to your account on chess.com, so basically okay. you would go to home profile. Home profile. You see your picture. Yes, yes. And then you have the tab notes and games. You click on the tab that's games. Oh, okay. So some of your, the more recent ones weren't that good, but look at the third, <laughs> look at the third one, 90% and your opponent played 95%. That he was obviously losing an engine. This both game. of <laughs> Stockfish. <laughs> both of you played very well. Uh, this game against Alexa, you played that on stream too. That wasn't as accurate, but you were streaming at the same time. So those are the more difficult ones. But some mm. of the other games you played crazy accurate. You see that one against Pab's, uh, Pab SG. Uh, wow. 96.6 holy okay. and then this one against rego park 96.8 you can holy. play very well i think it's the games where they like really just uh surrender the game very early on <laughs> probably <laughs> well the 11 Maybe. move might be but the other one was 21 moves and and also okay. some of these others like if you look at your list um some of these are super impressive. 30 moves against Le Delgado at the bottom of the list. 91.7% accuracy for you. And your opponent played pretty well too. 87.7. So, wow. <laughs> wow. Really good job. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> now, I wonder how the accuracy will be for the Blitz games. But let's oh. not focus on the, that much. The accuracy there in numbers. But just to be practical, make quick decisions, not lose on time. Okay. So try to not lose your pieces and not lose on time. Those will be our two objectives. It doesn't have to be a perfect game because at Blitz it becomes very difficult to play the best moves. But just uh, do not blunder your pieces. Uh, do not blunder checkmates either. But So okay. let's prevent basic <laughs> blunders and yes, let's yes. not lose on time as the two first objectives for Blitz games. Okay, okay. And how do you suggest I should like review my own games? Like... Uh... Like since I'm playing Blitz, like yeah. what, what should I just look for the red mistakes, like the big blunders, and just adjust those? Exactly. So um, let's say let's go to the top one um, where you had fifteen point two percent. So that's a low accuracy. I would assume there must be a, a red move in that game. If you see the, oh, the six very... six of them. <laughs> <laughs> the very top. So the red moves, those. Those are the ones I would focus on and try to understand why are they red moves. The ones that you okay. played, your opponent's red moves. Well, um, you can also look at your opponent's red moves to see if you missed any opportunities, because that's another thing. So we want to avoid you blundering. So every time mm. there's a red move, see why it says it's a red move. Um, okay. But like, if you look at Queen A5, for instance, a move 17, when you click on Queen A5, and it tells you that it's bad because white can take on g7 bishop takes g7 to sacrifice the bishop so some of these blunders are are not obvious at all that bishop mm. sacrifices is, is a very difficult sacrifice to make so even the red moves you don't always need to 
think, oh, that I played such a terrible move. <laughs> it's literally okay, telling okay. you that instead of that queen move, you should probably push the pawn to f6 so that white cannot sacrifice the bishop on g7. So yes, that's yes. something super deep level. And that, that's that's not intermediate level. That It's not a mistake on your level. Um, what would be okay. perhaps a mistake if I click on these other red moves? Queen g5. Okay, his his moves are red because he didn't realize that he can sacrifice the bishop. So this is... No, this was a very difficult game in general. And then it tells you queen d2 is bad. Okay, wow. Um, this is a crazy complex game. I <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> honestly, uh, none of this really matters until knight f2. You, al you almost survived. You almost did. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. Jeez. Okay. It was a disaster. I'm just, I'm just looking at what the engine says as a better option for you. And okay, wow. Okay, this will a uh, final exercise. You can open that that okay. moment because I think the only moment in this game, you had a very difficult position, and you were fighting to survive, and you almost mm. did it. The final moment where, where you missed was after you gave a check on e3 on move 21, queen takes e3. Your opponent plays knight f2. And I just... do you see that position? Yes, yes, yes. I have it open. Yeah. Even here, your position is super difficult. Um, but what you can learn from it for defense, um, sometimes, well, a lot of times when it comes to defending your king, uh, the position will be very difficult um, first of all psychologically um, mm -hmm. I always think that on a, in a psychological um, on a psychological level it's so much easier to be the attacker to to be with the one that even if you need to sacrifice but you go you keep making progress you, you go ahead you attack yes, yes. Um, so as the defender um, there's a psychological difficulty because even if you have a rook up or a a rook and bishop, a queen up, whatever, but your king is under attack and it's a checkmate threat. Psychologically, it's it's more difficult. Um, so that's one, why it's difficult to defend. And second, sometimes the defensive resources are, are ridiculous in a way that the moves barely make sense. So you need to, you need to look at moves that sometimes would be like, does it make sense at all? So when you look at this position after the move knight f2, you see that white is threatening checkmate, right? Yes, yes. And it's checkmate on two squares, it's as if it wasn't enough. Queen g7, queen h8 is also <laughs> made. So your instinct was to bring back the queen and protect those squares, right? Uh, yes. Which is a very natural instinct. Um, but the only issue is that white does have a strong move here and your opponent played it, knight takes g4 which attacks the queen again you have to play queen h7 right yes yes so, but all this is this is crazy difficult um even here one would think that you have chances of survival because at least you didn't get mated but one thing that um one thing that you can try to think of for next time for the defense but mm -hmm. once again this position is crazy difficult it's way above your level but to learn <laughs> from it to learn from it that queen on e3 is a very active piece because it's pinning the knight, it's attacking the rook. So if only you could keep it there and still not get mated, that would be preferable because what you what you did in the game is very logical. Honestly, I I'm still impressed that you that you managed to not get mated immediately there. <laughs> but to learn from this position can you find how to keep that queen on e3 and still not get mated? Is there a way? Oh. Um. Hmm. Like the only way I see it is if I uh, push the e pawn forward, but it feels like it doesn't accomplish anything because or actually, oh, it does. The the thing is hanging. Okay. With a check. 
All right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. <laughs> but see, I was I was thinking about it the wrong way. I was like, should I sacrifice the queen, Megan capture? <laughs> I was thinking this, but that was terrible. But okay, okay. Very I good see, job. But as you said, it looks like e5 doesn't do anything. It looks like e5 only just prolongs the mate. Um, because if white takes on e5 with the bishop, it feels like you haven't prevented checkmate, right? It still is the same queen bishop attacking your king. But the issue is that because you have this very active queen pointing at the rook, white cannot take on e5 with the bishop. And if white takes with the queen on e5, you are immediately trading queens. Because yes, yes. to defend your king, queen trades. That's one of the best defensive resources. Trade the queen. Threaten the trade. So all right, all right. this was a super difficult game. But if there's one takeaway from this game is to, if you have an active piece, try to keep it active unless there's no other move so queen h6 um is okay if that's your one option but because defensive positions can be so tough try to think outside the box when it comes to defense and look for moves that they may look they make no sense but you might discover a deeper idea behind it okay okay we'll do we'll do for sure i hope that's helpful but really in this game all the other red moves are crazy because the position was very difficult already so don't worry too much about them okay, okay. yeah the accuracy was <laughs> crazy low that's 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 insane all right but the engine is so cruel because both of you were playing a very difficult position so of course it's it's low accuracy because the engine would have given me it <laughs> earlier but your opponent was attacking with all their mighty it was a very very aggressive attack and you you fought so hard to try to keep your king safe so mm. the accuracy here is 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 not just definitely not fair all right all right that makes me feel better <laughs> yeah you should feel better about it but if we have another coaching session by then if you have questions from your own games uh, do let me know so if you can link me the games where you had a doubt and you tell me which move i'm gonna explain to you in the next session whenever you have a doubt in your own games or okay, i can go okay. back in the board and you tell me which which moments exactly even in, during the session if we if we have a next session you can just tell me look anna i played these games on stream the other day and i had this and this moment and we go back in your vod or we go back on your game list uh, whichever way is easier for you but i'm gonna help you understand your own games better all right thank you very much i really really appreciate that i will uh, try to uh, collect them in some folder or something sure my, whichever way is my, easier my worst mistakes <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, but to learn from your own mistakes is is the best way to make progress. And now the homework, blitz games, because we got we gotta make you all play right. fast. We gotta make you play fast. All right, all right, no worries at all. I <laughs> do good under pressure. I think. I, I tell would myself. assume so. I would assume <laughs> so. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been so much fun for me too to to get to know you in the first place and try to help you with your chess uh, progress and chess journey. Honestly, my, my honor and, and my pleasure. This was uh, super, super fun. It uh, reignited uh, my love for chess, uh, definitely. And uh, I'll be playing Blitz games right away. Excellent. Don't worry about it. We'll definitely I'm come good, over good homework. shortly to your channel. <laughs> All the best with the Blitz games. I'll catch you on the next one. Okay, Anna, thank you very much. Have a good night. Have right? a great day. Have a great day. Thank stream. you very much once again. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my.